Hey there pirates, welcome aboard the Anime Nomi channel. Mihawk is the most skilled and mysterious swordsman in the work of One Piece. His past is shrouded in mystery, revealing only small fragments about the events that made him so powerful. So in today's video, we're going to talk about the information we have so far about Mihawk's past and what consequences it had on his life after he became so powerful. Before we dive into the video, don't forget to smash that like button, give us a thumbs up to unlock your devil fruit powers, and hit that subscribe button to awaken. Now, let's jump into the video. Guys, Dracul Mihawk is widely recognized as the best swordsman in the world in the One Piece universe. His position as the greatest swordsman is not only based on his reputation, but is also solidified by his incredible skills, feats, and mastery in swordplay. Mihawk's first appearance in history occurred during the East Blue Saga, where he crossed paths with protagonist Monkey D. Luffy and his crew. However, it was in the Barati Saga that fans were introduced to Mihawk's true power when he easily defeated the pirate Don Krieg and his powerful armada with a single blow. The title of the world's greatest swordsman is a highly respected and coveted position in the One Piece universe. Mihawk bears this title, which is not just a vague recognition, but an official position. This designation is not bestowed without justification, and Mihawk holds it steadfastly, consistently proving his exceptional skill as a swordsman. One of the most memorable moments that reinforced Mihawk's position as the best swordsman was his duel with Shanks, one of the young the four most powerful pirates in the world. Although the outcome of the confrontation was not revealed, most likely resulting in several draws between these two swordsmen, the fact that Shanks, one of the most feared and respected pirates, sought out Mihawk to duel is indicative of this legendary swordsman's status. Mihawk is a master of two forms of hockey, a vital skill in the world of one piece. His proficiency in hockey, combined with his physical prowess and agility, makes him a formidable opponent in any battle. Furthermore, he wields one of the twelve supreme swords, the Kokutu Yoru, a renowned black sword that is considered one of the most powerful weapons in the world, in addition to being exaggeratedly large. Throughout the narrative, several characters express respect and admiration for Mihawk. This includes other notable swordsmen, such as Roranoa Zoro, who seeks to become the best swordsman in the world, and sees Mihawk as his ultimate goal. Within One Piece, there is only one potential equal, someone who could offer him a true challenge. Shanks, one of the most powerful Yonko. Before Shanks, Shanks lost his arm during an encounter with a Sea King to save Monkey D. Luffy. He and Mihawk were known for dueling regularly. His battles were so intense that even Mihawk's title of greatest swordsman in the world was not easily achieved. However, circumstances have changed. After losing his arm, Shanks rose to the status of Yonku, a position of great power and prestige among pirates. Although he has become one of the most feared and respected pirates in the world, the question remains whether Shanks has managed to fully regain his mastery of swordplay. He has perfected his other arm in pursuit of regaining his high swordsmanship as in the past, but the true extent of his swordsmanship remains a mystery. The expectation surrounding the possibility of a confrontation between Mihawk and Shanks is enormous. Fans are eager to see if Shanks, now a Yonku, still maintains the dexterity and skill that made his duels with Mihawk legendary. It would be a clash between two titans, each representing an unparalleled force in their own right. Meanwhile, there is also a rising figure in the world of One Piece who seeks to reach Mihawk's heights in search of a battle that can bring him joy and satisfaction. Roranoa Zoro. The ambitious swordsman has Mihawk as his idol and aims to surpass him one day. Zoro's journey to become the greatest swordsman is an exciting element of the narrative, and fans eagerly await the day when he can challenge Mihawk to fulfill his promise of overcoming. Although in the present, there are not many enemies that could offer a great confrontation to Mihawk, in the past, there were many skilled swordsmen, and possibly stronger than Mihawk and Shanks. The lands of Wano Country were home to legendary swordsmen, whose sword skills were so extraordinary they could rival or surpass those of Dracul Mihawk himself. Among these warriors, one name stood out with grandeur and prestige, Shimotsuki Ryuma, known as the God of the Sword. Ryuma not only mastered the sword arts, but was also revered for his remarkable feat of having defeated a dragon with a single blow. Ryuma's legacy, dating back to the Wano Gold Country era, is living proof of the rich swordsmanship tradition of this isolated region. Not only did he carry with him the distinction of being a strong blade-type swordsman, but he was also recognized as the strongest swordsman of his time. Feats of his, including cutting copper and defeating Serrano, a top-notch swordsman, solidified his reputation as an unrivaled master of the sword. Ryuma, whose lineage includes Shimotsuki, Ushimaru, and Roranoa Zoro, transcended his era and continued to be revered centuries after his death. In Wano country, his 
title of Sword God echoed as a testament to his devotion to his legendary skill. His legacy was so powerful that even his sword, Shu Sui, became a national treasure of the country. Ryuma's time was marked by skilled and fearless swordsmen, a scenario that contrasts with the present, where Mihawk, the best swordsman in the world, incessantly searches for worthy challenges. In the past, there were several skilled swordsmen who could offer Mihawk an intense confrontation, like Ryuma. Competition between these warriors not only tested their skills, but also enriched the world of sword arts with memorable rivalries. While Mihawk continues to reign as today's supreme swordsman, the glorious past of figures like Ryuma stands as a reminder of the eras when many talented swordsmen raised their blades in pursuit of supremacy. In the One Piece universe, the legends of swordsmen are not lost to time, but continue to inspire and shape the future of aspiring great swordmasters like Rora no Azora. Ryuma's legacy remains one of many fascinating chapters in the rich history of sword battles in One Piece. In this scenario of tradition and honor, Ryuma's heritage directly influenced the life of Roro no Azoro, a swordsman whose journey led him to cross paths with the mysteries and challenges of the country of Wano. As Zoro embarks on his quest to become the best swordsman in the world, he not only inherits the will to overcome formidable challenges, but also carries with him the sword Shusui, which once belonged to the legendary sword god. The blade, now one of the ultimate swords, becomes an extension of Zoro himself, connecting him to Wano's glorious past. The story of Ryuma and his legendary prowess echoes through the generations, fueling the fire of ambition in the hearts of warriors who seek mastery in the art of the sword. In the present, as in the past, the title of Sword God is not just a position, but a symbol of excellence that transcends the boundaries of time. As One Piece's narrative unfolds, the swordsmanship tradition of Wano Country continues to play a crucial role, shaping the narrative and contributing to character development. Zoro's journey, in particular, becomes a reflection of the rich heritage left by Ryuma, a relentless quest for self-improvement and the search for true mastery in the art of the sword. Another character who could offer Mihawk a great duel would be Figureland Garling, the distinguished world noble and supreme commander of the Knights of God, emerges as an enigmatic and powerful figure in the One Piece universe. His high position in the world noble hierarchy grants him not only authority over the Knights of God, but also the ability to judge his own peers for behaviors considered intolerable. As a member of this aristocracy, Garling is presumed to enjoy all the privileges and wealth associated with the world nobles. In addition to being an extremely skilled swordsman, Garling's reputation as leader of the Knights of God, an organization that Monkey D. Dragon, the head of the Revolutionary Army, watches warily, suggests that his abilities and power are considerable, even by the world nobles' high standards. Little is known about his combat prowess, but the mere fact that he led this military group indicates that he is a formidable figure. They are responsible for protecting and giving orders to the other world nobles, demonstrating that they are really strong. The peak of Garling's skills was witnessed during the native hunting competition at God Valley 38 years ago. In this remarkable event, he was acclaimed as the favored champion among the world nobles, displaying his prowess by taking the lead in the competition despite starting with a negative 10,000 points. Garling's involvement in the God Valley incident remains shrouded in mystery, but his readiness to face the fearsome Rock and Roger pirates, two of the most powerful pirate crews of the time, highlights his courage and skill in critical situations. His trademark weapon, a large saber with a rounded bowguard, is a reflection of his elegance and power, a piece that has accompanied him for decades. It could be one of the 12 most powerful swords in the world of One Piece. Considering Garling's vast array of skills and combat experience, it wouldn't be a stretch to suggest he would be a worthy opponent for Dracul Mihawk, the world's greatest swordsman. As another world noble with a history of participating in events of great magnitude, Garling could very well offer sword fighting worthy of Mihawk's renown. This hypothetical battle between two blade titans would certainly be a spectacle of strength, skill, and strategy, leaving One Piece fans eager for such an epic clash. The story of Dracul Mihawk, a prominent figure in the One Piece universe, reads like an epic tale of dedication, ambition, and eventual disillusionment. Mihawk is known as the greatest swordsman in the world, a reputation earned through a lifetime time dedicated to mastering the sword and honing his skills. From a young age, Mihawk demonstrated incredible skill with a sword and an unwavering determination to become the best swordsman the world has ever seen, aspiring to the top. He embarked on a relentless journey, facing challenges and powerful opponents along the way. His training was arduous, his battles were fierce, but Mihawk persevered, guided by a clear goal to become a symbol of prowess with a sword. After years of effort and sacrifice, constantly
constantly fighting Shanks and several other swordsmen throughout the seas of One Piece, Mihawk has finally achieved his dream. He became the greatest swordsman in the world, a title few would dare dispute. However, achieving this goal brought with it a surprising revelation and, for Mihawk, great loneliness and boredom. In the new generation of swordsmen that emerged in the world of One Piece, Mihawk discovered an alarming lack of worthy adversaries. His unparalleled prowess with the sword became a curse, as the solitude of the top was something he had not anticipated. The absence of worthy rivals left him discouraged, as the thrill of competition and constant challenge were an essential part of his journey. Mihawk's frustration is palpable, as he contemplates the lack of worthy opponents and the apparent absence of anyone capable of rivaling his mastery. His title as the world's greatest swordsman, which was once his greatest triumph, has become a source of deep sadness or boredom. Faced with the loneliness that surrounded Mihawk's life as the world's greatest swordsman, his attention turned to a young swordsman whose potential deeply intrigued him, Rora Noah Zoro. Mihawk saw in Zoro not just raw skill, but an inner fire, a determination that echoed the intensity of his own days of hard training. Zoro, the straw hat swordsman and member of the straw hat pirates crew, became a source of fascination for Mihawk. By observing Zoro's development throughout his countless battles and challenges, Mihawk saw in him not only a potential disciple, but the possibility of a worthy rival. Mihawk began to harbor an interest in Zoro, indirectly guiding him on his journey of growth as a swordsman. He saw the latent potential in Zoro, the flame of ambition burning in his eyes. Driven by his desire to find a worthy opponent, Mihawk invested in Zoro's evolution, wanting the young swordsman to reach a level that would truly challenge him. The silent mentor, Mihawk watches from afar, waiting for Zoro to reach his peak and become a formidable swordsman. He longs for the day when he can face Zoro in an epic battle, where both their sword mastery is put to the test. This vision transcends mere rivalry, is Mihawk's search for a challenge that rekindles the flame that once burned so brightly in his own heart, allowing you to feel the desire for battles again. In the vast universe of One Piece, two of the most formidable and mysterious swordsmen are Shanks the Red and Dracul Mahawk, known as former rivals who competed for the title of the greatest swordsman in the world. Both possess unparalleled skill with their blades, elevating them to legendary status among characters in the series. Speculation about a possible clash between these two sword titans is a recurring theme among fans, generating exciting expectations and theories. The scenario for this future meeting is shrouded in mystery, since the circumstances that could lead these two colossi to face each other have not yet been completely revealed by the series creator. However, considering past events and established relationships, we can make some speculations about how this extraordinary clash could unfold. Shanks, known for his charismatic personality and his influence as captain of the Red Hair Pirates, is a character who represents not only brute strength but also deep wisdom and a meaningful connection to other key characters in the series, such as Luffy and the crew of the Straw Hats. His fighting style is as enigmatic as he is, with a combination of agility, strength, and incomparable mastery with advanced hockey, and using his sword Gryphon, an extremely powerful and considerably legendary sword. On the other side, we have Dracul Mihawk, the current holder of the title of the greatest swordsman in the world. His imposing and calm presence hides a devastating skill with the sword Yoru, which is known to be one of the 12 supreme swords of the world. Mihawk is a man of few words, but his actions speak volumes about his prowess as a swordsman. He is a keen observer and a solitary traveler, constantly seeking challenges that test his unparalleled skill. The anticipation surrounding this possible confrontation is related to the fact that Shanks and Mihawk are often considered the only known swordsmen who are on equal footing in terms of skill. Both have reputations that precede their arrival, which makes their encounter a promise of an epic spectacle, causing a great epic confrontation between these two characters. The reason behind this clash is still a subject of speculation. It might be a matter of honor, a quest for personal improvement, or even an external force compelling them to face each other. As rumors about a possible meeting between Shanks and Myhawk intensify, an intriguing theory emerges that adds a new element to the clash. The search for the legendary treasure, One Piece. The idea that these two titans of the sword could face each other again, not just for the sake of honor or personal rivalry, but to determine who is truly worthy of unlocking the final secrets of the seas. The enigma surrounding One Piece, the treasure coveted by pirates around the world, is one of the series' fundamental mysteries. The suggestion that Shanks and Mihawk could engage in a duel to decide who will bear this monumental responsibility is exciting for fans and promises to be one of the highlights of the final One Piece saga. The search for One Piece is not just a matter of material wealth, but rather of unlocking 
the secrets behind D, the lost history, and the ponies, crucial elements to understanding the world that Iachiro Oda has meticulously built over the years. Shanks, with his wisdom and deep connections, and Mihawk, with his constant search for challenges and knowledge, represent ideal candidates to face the dangers and challenges that One Piece may present. Furthermore, the idea that the battle between Shanks and Mihawk will determine who is worthy of searching for One Piece again has reignited the flame of a competition between these two pirates. Both characters have close ties to other notable members of the One Piece world, and the decision to engage in this epic confrontation could have significant consequences for them and those around them. As the two swordsmen prepare for this potential confrontation, fans are left on the edge of their seats, waiting for answers that have the potential to redefine not only the fates of Shanks and Mihawk, but also the course of the world of One Piece as one all. The meeting of these two masters of the sword will not only be a physical battle, but also a test of wisdom, loyalty, and, above all, determination to face the unknown in search of the final treasure that promises to transform the history of the seas forever. The story between Myhawk and Shanks carries a lot of weight in the history of One Piece, in addition to being indirectly linked to Zoro, as this confrontation between these two pirates caused Mihawk to obtain a title that Zoro currently desires. The sacrifice of Shanks, who offered his arm to save a young boy who aspired to become a great pirate, known as Monkey D. Luffy from an attack by a sea king, was an act of nobility and courage. However, for Mihawk, this represented an irreparable loss. The loss of an important part of Shanks's body brought to the surface a range of complex emotions in Mihawk, who found himself confronted not only with the magnitude of his opponent's strength, but also with the inherent fragility of the human condition. This remarkable experience had a lasting impact on the relationship between Mihawk and Shanks. The loss of an important limb left in Shanks's body became a mark on Mihawk's soul, constantly reminding him of the vulnerability that even the most formidable pirates can experience. The loss of Shanks' arm served as a continual reminder of the futility of human strength. No matter how strong it may be, there is a high chance of being injured in combat. Even though Mihawk became the greatest swordsman in the world, the memory of that episode remains an emotional burden. After all, no matter how much he seeks challenges and worthy rivals, the sight of Shanks' sacrifice is a constant reminder that even in the greatest battles, there is always a price to be paid. As time progresses, the expectation of a reunion between Myhawk and Shanks becomes more charged with meaning. It is not just a search for a worthy opponent, but also an attempt to reconcile with the past and understand the true cost of greatness. The narrative between Mihawk and Shanks transcends the mere physical confrontation within the work of One Piece. It is a journey of self-discovery and acceptance of the complexities that permeate his being, a way for Mihawk to understand and feel happiness and the desire for battle again. The frustration imposed by Shanks in the past was a powerful catalyst in Mihawk's journey. Shanks's arm sacrifice not only left a physical mark on his former rival, but also a deep emotional wound on Mihawk. This frustration, far from being a mere grudge, has transformed into a complex motivation that influences the actions of the world's greatest swordsman in the present, making him even colder and more dissatisfied with battles. Shanks' rise to the status of Yonku, one of the four most powerful pirates in the world, could have sparked Mihawk's interest in facing his old enemy again. Mihawk, recognizing the immense power that Shanks now holds, could seek the opportunity to fight Shanks, seeking to try to feel again that great emotion that Shanks made him feel in the past during an intense and exciting combat. However, this search for a rematch goes beyond mere competition. Mihawk wishes to not only measure his abilities against Shanks, but also understand the changes that have occurred in both of them since that fateful day. The scar left on Shanks's body is a metaphor for the emotional scars they both carry. As the world of One Piece evolves, the characters' personal stories become intertwined, and the meeting between these two characters becomes increasingly close to happening, resulting in, as previously stated, a major global confrontation between Shanks and Mihawk, two great swordsmen. Mihawk and Shanks's story serves as a constant reminder that even among the most powerful, vulnerability is an unavoidable reality. Shanks, despite his bravery and strength, paid a heavy price for his ideals that day. However, as Mihawk approaches the possibility of a reunion with Shanks, a shadow of doubt hangs over the heart of the world's greatest swordsman. Shanks' rise to Yonku status brought with it not only unparalleled power, but also noticeable changes in his approach and lifestyle. Mihawk, always attentive to the possibilities of his former rival's abilities, begins to realize that Shanks' mastery may not be as great as in the past, where they both had equal mastery of swords. Mihawk's frustration reaches a new level because, even in the face of Shanks' absolute power,
power, the search for a worthy opponent seems to persist. The possible realization that Shanks may have lost part of his mastery on the way to becoming a Yonku creates an emotional dilemma for Mihawk. He who once represented the pinnacle of skill and prowess may now no longer be the perfect opponent that Mihawk so longed for. Shanks excels greatly in his hockey. However, his sword skills may not be as powerful as they once were. The absence of a true challenge, even in the form of Shanks, casts a shadow over Mihawk's journey, questioning whether, in the ever-changing world of One Piece, there is anyone capable of truly measuring up against him. The incessant search for a worthy opponent, the attempt to find lasting meaning in his mastery, and the constant reflection on the price of greatness become crucial elements in his journey. It remains for Mihawk to overcome this internal frustration that consumes him, since this feeling is an inevitable consequence of having reached the top, or if, perhaps, there is an unexplored horizon that still awaits his discovery. Faced with uncertainty about finding a worthy opponent, Mihawk, on his journeys, begins to consider an unusual alternative. Roranoa Zoro, the young swordsman whose potential he has been following closely. As Zoro follows his own path in search of becoming the greatest swordsman, Mihawk sees in him not only a disciple, but perhaps the hope of filling the void that the lack of genuine challenges has left in his life. Zoro's training under Mihawk's tutelage during the two-year time skip reveals itself not only as preparation for external challenges, but also as an emotional investment from the world's greatest swordsman. Mihawk sees in Zoro the determination and potential needed to transcend limits, offering a chance to relive the thrill of the battles that once fueled him. By placing his hopes in Zoro, Mihawk signals a symbolic transfer of his legacy. He sees in the disciple a possibility of breaking away from the loneliness and frustration that surround his journey. The idea that Zoro could, one day, pose a worthy challenge is a relief for Mihawk, a light at the end of the tunnel he longs to travel, a small hope that Zoro could one day be as strong as him, or even much more so. This dynamic between master and apprentice is something very interesting to see, making it an intriguing chapter for the fate of Mihawk and even Zoro, which plays a big role in this narrative. As Zoro advances on his own journey of growth, the shadow of the world's greatest swordsman looms over him, not just as a challenge to overcome, but as a responsibility to inherit the legacy of a man who dedicated his life to the mastery of the sword. Mihawk's story intertwines more deeply with Zoro's journey, creating a unique narrative tension. Mihawk, in his search for meaning, awaits the day when Zoro can not only fulfill his own ambitions, but also offer Mihawk the worthy battle he craves. Despite Zoro's impressive advances during his journey in Wano, where he faced monumental challenges and gained formidable strength, the truth is that, at the current moment in history, he is still not fully prepared to face Mihawk. Zoro's newfound power, earned with dedication and tenacity in Wano, is like a blade too sharp to be wielded masterfully. He does not yet have full control over this new power. Zoro, although he has become an extraordinarily powerful swordsman, faces the arduous task of controlling and channeling this colossal strength, still needing training so that he can use his full potential during a fight. His journey in Wano may have set him on the path to reaching new heights of skill, but there is a crucial difference between the raw possession of power and true mastery over it. At the current stage of the narrative, Zoro is in the middle of this mastery process. Mihawk, the consummate master of the sword, realizes this need and understands that even though Zoro has become an extraordinary warrior, he has not yet reached the full maturity of his skills. Zoro's blunt blade may be sharp and powerful, but without proper polish and control, it can become a double-edged weapon, risking harm to both wielder and opponent. Thus, the dynamic between Mihawk and Zoro continues to evolve further into this master and apprentice relationship. Mihawk, patient and perceptive, awaits the moment when Zoro achieves the perfect harmony between his brute strength and his technical skill, creating a swordsman who can truly challenge him. Until then, Zoro's journey to achieve complete mastery of his skills continues, while Mihawk, the lone swordmaster, watches intently, awaiting the day when his disciple becomes the greatest swordsman. As the final saga of One Piece approaches, Zoro delves delves even deeper into his quest to master the sword. His journey leads him to refine his already extraordinary skills, combining the brute strength acquired in Wano with sharp and precise technique. Furthermore, Zoro improved his mastery over Haki, allowing him an incredible ability to cut the toughest Yonku in the world of One Piece, even leaving a large scar on Kaido. Throughout this latest saga, Zoro has not only perfected his existing techniques, but also acquired new powerful and resistant swords. Each blade becomes an extension 
expression of his will, a manifestation of his desire to become the greatest swordsman in the world. Swords, now more than ever, represent not just combat tools, but symbols of your dedication and progress over the years of training, hard to achieve your goals. With his improved arsenal and refined control over his abilities, Zoro is finally able to face Mihawk as a complete swordsman, allowing him to achieve a great victory. He would no longer be just the disciple in search of overcoming, but a formidable warrior, ready to face the greatest challenge of his life. The confrontation with Dracul Mihawk, the long-awaited clash between master and apprentice approaches, and the world of One Piece prepares to witness the collision of two titanic forces. Zoro, now at the height of his abilities, faces Mihawk, the greatest swordsman in the world, in a duel that will echo across the seas. This confrontation is not just a physical battle, but a symbolic representation of Zoro's journey and his determination to overcome his own limits. The intensity of the clash resonates not only in the clash of swords, but in the overcoming of emotional obstacles and the search for meaning in their respective journeys. Mihawk's fate as the world's greatest swordsman now hangs in the balance of change. The confrontation between Mihawk and Zoro is a long-awaited chapter, eagerly awaited by fans, and which, when it finally happens, will leave an indelible mark on the history of the seas and pirates of One Piece. The battle between Mihawk and Zoro would be a spectacle of skill and determination, where each blow, parry, and counterattack would be executed masterfully. In addition to the Mihawk's defeat, while surprising, would not only be Zoro's achievement, but also the fulfillment of Mihawk's dream. Finally, the greatest swordsman in the world would find someone equal to his skill, someone capable of challenging him to the limit. Defeat would not be a sign of weakness, but rather a testament to Mihawk's continued growth and the inevitable succession of generations. For Zoro, victory would be more than winning a title. It would be proof that your dreams and ambitions were not just fantasies, but tangible goals that could be achieved with hard work, dedication, and an unwavering belief in your own abilities. Not only would he defeat Mihawk, but he would also take on the mantle of the world's greatest swordsman, continuing the legacy and paving the way for even greater challenges on his final journey. The world of One Piece would be rocked by this epic duel, witnessing the transfer of a legendary title from a master to his disciple. Mihawk, by accepting defeat with dignity, would pass the torch to the next generation, while Zoro would become the embodiment of the new pinnacle of swordsmanship. A page would be turned in the lives of both swordsmen, but the fighting spirit and quest for mastery would continue, shaping the swordsman's destiny in the vast and exciting world of One Piece. Finally, in the vast and intricate universe of One Piece, where daring pirates seek legendary treasures and epic clashes shape destinies, a narrative emerges that transcends the mere quest for power. At the epicenter of this saga is Roronoa Zoro, a fearless swordsman whose destiny seems uniquely intertwined with the legendary Dracul Mihawk, the current holder of the title of greatest swordsman in the world. As the story unfold and the battles unfold, it becomes increasingly evident that Zoro is the only one in the vast ocean of challengers who can truly provide a match for Mihawk. It's not just Zoro's burning ambition to surpass his mentor that puts him in this unique position, but rather his combination of skill, determination, and an unwavering devotion to constantly improving his skills. Zoro, known for his brute strength, impressive dexterity, and the ability to wield three swords simultaneously, represents the embodiment of what it means to be a true swordmaster. His commitment to overcoming, combined with his insatiable thirst for challenges, makes him the ideal candidate to face Mihawk in a battle that would transcend the boundaries of conventional skill. Mihawk, in turn, finds in Zoro not only a disciple eager to surpass him, but an adversary whose potential to reach new heights of sword mastery is undeniable. Mihawk's shadow would never loom as imposingly over anyone as it does over Zoro, and it is in this never-ending challenge that both swordsmen would find a unique opportunity for growth and self-discovery. While others may be lost in the vastness of the ocean, unable to rival Mihawk's unparalleled skill, Zoro remains like a blazing flame, a hope that burns brightly on the horizon. His journey journey is not just a quest for the title of greatest swordsman, but rather a quest to become Mihawk's ultimate challenger, the one who can elevate the concept of sword fighting to new heights. Thus, the stage is set for a clash that will resonate through the ages, where Mihawk and Zoro will meet in a sword duel that will transcend expectations and challenge the very essence of sword mastery. In a world where the strongest dictate the course of history, Zoro stands out as the only one capable of offering Mihawk combat worthy of his greatness. The legend continues, 
and the wait for this epic clash only intensifies fans' fascination with this exciting chapter of One Piece. That's a wrap for today's content. We hope you enjoyed it and want to share your thoughts on the subject. Don't forget to share the video, give it a thumbs up, and catch you in the next video. Take care and stay awesome.